Hanoi Dog Lab was founded in 2009 by Nguyen Ching Thi, an independent filmmaker and a visual artist. With great enthusiasm for filmmaking, she has been working hard to build a community for those who share the same passion and create a space for experimental visual art. She has also organized various visual installation exhibitions that received great response from art lovers in Hanoi. Welcome to our On The Mic of VTV4. So first question is that um, you studied and work in the U.S. and then, then you decided to come back here and work in an independent filmmaker. So what is the reason for that? When I studied uh, journalism in the States, um, it was the first time that I also uh, took a few courses in visual communications and photography. So I started to make documentary films and um, at that time, I started to really want to come back to Vietnam. You used to work as a journalist. Uh, it's a kind of desired career for many people, but then you turn to something else, which is becoming a filmmaker. So can you say something about that? When I came back in 2007, uh, I realized that they started to have here and there a few efforts uh, to train documentary filmmakers and uh, independent filmmakers. And that was something that is just started in Vietnam. Uh, and I wanted to help uh, building the community of uh, independent filmmakers. Since you became an independent filmmaker, so how many projects or artworks have you created? I really don't know how many. It's difficult to count because the projects are very, very different. Um, uh, some projects are really, really long-term kind of uh, archiving or documentary um, that would take many many years I think in all these projects that I work it's many of them kind of intertwine or spring out of each other with a special interest in southern video installation Winching Thi had her first exhibition themed unsubtitled in 2010 offering a haunting and defiant testament to the power and fragility of Hanoi's experimental art scene. Examining the gap between artists and general public and questioning long-running methods of surveillance and intimidation pervasive in Vietnam, he creates an ethereal portrait of that time in Hanoi and the artists who inhabit it. And this year, she's back with another exhibition themed solo for a choir. And you just come back with another project, Solo for a Choir. So can you say something about the preparation for this project? We came up with the way of uh, shooting uh, each person separately uh, against the black. And then we have to project all these people to the wood. It took a lot of, of testing and um, experimentation. So about this project, how do you get the inspiration to make this exhibition possible? From the time when I came back to Vietnam, I started to be very interested in artists in Vietnam. And I started to interview and study the, um, the artists from previous generations. Of course, they had to face uh, different issues and different difficulties in, in life and in work and also in their relationship with society. Um, so I compare that to our generation now of artists and that became a very a, a big topic that I'm very interested in. So what is the biggest purpose of this exhibition? What is the message that you want to deliver to the public through this event? When you look at uh, artworks in general and in Vietnam, um, we feel like uh, between the artwork and the life, even of the, of the artists themselves, there's no, not much connection. That's why in this work, um, I, I wanted to eliminate the, this gap between art and life or between artists and the audience. Just as in unsubtitled, within Solo for a Choir, 18 actors and actresses are projected onto life-size silhouette screens scattered throughout the gallery. Four characters are paired and the rest are on individual black screens. The characters, all seemingly auditioning for a part of the Choir of Life, 
that has no set manuscript are caught in personal spaces, contemplating, talking to themselves, fiddling with objects, reading aloud, or just being for long durations. The video combines with performance art became an experimental theater that amazes every visitor at the event. Talking about experimental art, what can you say about the development of these art scenes in Vietnam in recent years? I can say for, uh, for my field, video art and moving image, for example, in our center, although it started as a center for documentary films, but when we do the training or when we work with young people there, we always try to encourage them to do something that is more experimental. I can see that their direction or uh, their approach become very, very different. And they became much more uh, oriented towards things that is more uh, individualistic. Now they really prefer to, to make films that is not so much uh, conventional or, or, or kind of like narrative based but they they like to experiment more with the visuals so that's what I see in the change in the young people. Some people say that uh, experimental artists are facing a lot of difficulties even more than other artists so do you agree with this idea? Experimental art usually means non-commercial and non-commercial meaning that you cannot make any money we, we don't have very good system in Vietnam to support artists who do things that are not uh, commercial. For example, we don't really have grants, uh, funding like in other countries uh, for artists to apply to. We have just a couple of, uh, of uh, foundations in Vietnam who can provide the funds for this kind of work, but not enough. And finally, can you say something about your future art projects? There's a group, a very interesting performance artist group called Appendix. They have five people and they always perform together. I already collaborated with them in this kind of work, but uh, now I want to do more with them uh, to create uh, some kind of um, maybe experimental theater or experimental film using performance. Thank you very much for joining our show and hope to see you back again in the next uh, art project. Yeah, thank you.